This is day 13 of reading Revelation. Then I saw in heaven another sign, great and awe-inspiring, seven angels with the seven last plagues, for through them God's fury is accomplished. Then I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. On the sea of glass were standing those who had won the victory over the beast and its image and the number that signified its name. They were holding God's harps, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this I had another vision. The temple that is the heavenly tent of testimony opened, and the seven angels with the seven plagues came out of the temple. They were dressed in clean white linen, with a gold sash around their chests. One of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven gold bowls, filled with the fury of God, who lives forever and ever. Then the temple became so filled with the smoke from God's glory and might that no one could enter it until the seven plagues of the seven angels had been accomplished. Today, in the way that these passages broke up into daily chunks for this purpose, we have a fairly short passage. And again, it's, it's a welcome interlude of relative calm. We have another vision of worship, of what it would be like to be in the presence of God. And given that that's what we're seeing, this might be a good time to remind you again of economia, the idea that economy somehow means the way that the household of God is managed. Clearly what we see here is that worship, expressed as the praise of God, is our main job as managers of the household of God. Plainly, we do other things. We serve in the world. We serve the other children of God. We try to meet the needs of the world. But our first and most important purpose, the, the, one, the only one that we do that no one else does, is worship. And if we fail to worship, even doing those other things will in some way be hollow because we will not have recognized and given proper credit to the source from which all of our blessings come, the source from which all of our ability and our inspiration to serve in the world originates. So although others may have more resources, may have better government backing, whatever it takes to do certain kinds of missions in the world, our source of power, our source of strength lies with the God we worship and with God's desire that we should do these other things. And this interesting question of who wins victory over the beast, we hear that described here, and it might seem as if it sounds like we win victory over the beast. The beast in this case being the devil, evil, Satan, however you want to describe it. But surely, as Orthodox Christians, we would agree that only Jesus can accomplish that. Only Jesus can win final victory over all the evils of this world. And in fact, humanity wins only through faith in him. So part of what we are being shown here is that in God's final victory, uh, we may share it, but ultimately these are things that are like Good Friday to Easter Sunday, somewhat out of our control in the plan of God, in the purposes of God, to be lived out by us in our lives by the grace and mercy of God. And then with that, we turn back to less pleasant, more troubling images. We hear the beginnings of the seven plagues vision. Plainly, this is nothing that we would want to have happen to us. And if we are showing appropriate charity, nothing that we would want to have happen to anyone else either. So it's worth asking, what is the source of these things? Is it really from God? Can God really will that people should suffer? Or are we really seeing something that is closer to the fulfillment of our own choices? Clearly, 
God has given us the ability to make choices, and in some cases we make good ones, in some cases we make bad ones. Some cases we make bad choices even knowing that they're bad choices while we're doing it. So is this in some way, again, recognizing that these are metaphors, we're not meant to think literally about any of these images. They're not things that we should expect to see happening tomorrow when we go out into the world. Rather, they should be seen as ways that our lives and our, our happiness, our comfort, our hope for the future can be impaired by the consequences of the ways that we resist and reject what it is that God offers to us. This helps in a way when we come to the image of the, the, the furious God, the fury of God being poured out on the world. Clearly, this is something that we hear again and again in the Old Testament and that is present more than once in Revelation. But it's not really the only image that we have of God, and it's not even the one that is dominant in the Gospels or elsewhere in the New Testament. That image of God is more gracious and merciful. So it's useful to remember that those two things are supposed to be there at least in equal measure. And if we are to believe Jesus and the promises that he makes to us, that the grace and mercy of God ultimately are the most important qualities of God, far more important than any wrathfulness that God might at times express toward our rebellion and our sin. And for that reason, we should probably resist the temptation to make us and them judgments in this case. If these are, again, as I say, if these are things we would not want to have happened to us, plainly we shouldn't want them to happen to others. And we would be rash to assume always that we are in the the, the good camp, the sheep camp, and all those other people are in the goats camp. It's been pointed out a couple of times by a member of St. Thomas's that when surveyed, people assume that hell is for other people. It would be wise of us not to consign anyone to any plague or calamity or misfortune, but rather to recognize that now, all of these qualities, good and bad, exist in all of us to one degree or another. And clearly, clearly, those bad qualities uh, must be burnt away if we are truly to be the children God intends us to be. <laughs> ¶¶